Over the weekend, North Korea successfully put a satellite into orbit, and it claims the mission is part of its peaceful space program. But the UN is calling it a sign of aggression and plans to level new sanctions against the country. And South Korea also responding today by firing five warning shots after a North Korean patrol boat briefly moved south of the disputed border in the Yellow Sea. So a lot of provocation there. Joe Serencioni is the president of Plowshares Fund and author of Nuclear Nightmare, Securing the World Before It's Too Late. Again, an apropos title for this topic. Joe, I asked Gordon this, and I'd love your take on it as well. What is the significance of North Korea's launch? Well, they've passed a major milestone here. This is their second satellite launch. They've successfully done it. They're getting to master their technology. So that's the bad news. The good news is this is not actually a long-range missile. It's not as simple as slapping a nuclear warhead on this. So they're still years away from developing a launcher that's big enough and powerful enough to reach the United States and a nuclear warhead that's small enough and light enough to put on it. But the bad news? If they keep trying, they are going to perfect this technology. So we don't want that to happen. You and I have spoken about this quite a few times, that uh, administrations of both parties have failed to deter yeah. North Korea from these activities. So what is the solution? Yeah, it's not just a matter of being tough or deploying missile defenses. Uh, Bush failed to stop them. Obama has failed to stop them. Clearly, we need a new strategy. Most people agree that the key to that is to get bigger sticks. So there's some sanctions that we could put on North Korea, like freezing their overseas bank accounts, the bank accounts the corrupt leadership uses for their own personal purposes, something similar to what we did with Iran that got them to the negotiating table. But the key is China. You, China's the one that is their real economic lifeline. You want China to crack down on them. China doesn't want to crack down on them. So how do we pressure China? One promising technique might be what we're now doing with South Korea, talking to them about deploying missile defenses in South Korea. The THAAD system, a capable system against the short-range rockets that the North Koreans now have, China doesn't want South Korea to do this. This might be the pressure point that finally gets China to be serious about helping us clamp down on North Korea. So listen to this headline. This is coming by way of Reuters. U.S. and South Korea to start formal consultation on possible deployment of THAAD system. This out of the Pentagon. So this is just crossing right now. So this is what you're talking about, Joe. Exactly. So the South Koreans want to do this, one, because they want a defense against the rockets that South Korea, North Korea actually has, short and medium range rockets that can reach their soil. And two, they want to do it politically to show their population that uh, they're actually doing something. But this can work for us diplomatically to get China more into the game, to be tougher. Now, here's the key. China doesn't want to push North Korea enough so that the regime collapses. They want to have new talks with South Korea, with North Korea. Well, there's a, a bargain. North Korea has to be cracked down on. So China can do that. China wants us to bring North Korea to the table. Let's do that. More sanctions, but also new talks. Interesting. So the regime would stay in that scenario, and that's a big question about the way ahead, about if the regime should stay or should go, and that, that brings in a larger but, conversation. I'm going to be cut off by commercial, Joe, unfortunately, but <laughs> we had that breaking news. I always do this year. I apologize. <laughs> but, Joe, it's Thank great you, to have you Jenna. on the program as always. Thank you very much. My pleasure.